Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. So sit back and relax or walk and listen and join me on this journey as we try to answer this never-ending question. What makes people say why not? Hello, welcome back to Why Not. So today I wanted to talk all about the mistakes I've made, or I see other PTs made. Maybe it's both of us, who knows. Um, but anyway, mistakes, I'm going to be real, which is tell you stupid things I've done over the years. I'm still probably doing stupid things. In three years time now, I'll be like, here's some more stupid things I did. But that is today's plan. So I'm talking like crash dieting, fall into that culture, training, cardio, you know, all the different things that I did over the years and now I'm like "Mm, that was a bit silly. Hello hello and welcome back to Why Not. So after much procrastination I am recording this week's episode. I had intended to do this earlier but do you ever um, procrastinate so hard on doing something that you actually end up becoming productive? And you end up like doing stuff like cleaning or reorganizing something that you've been putting off for ages because it helps you put off something else that you have to do. Anyway, that's my long way of saying today I cleaned the guinea pig cage before recording the podcast <laughs> after coming home from work. But here I am, I am here and today I wanted to talk to you all about mistakes I have made over the years, Um, like, you know, as a PT or even before I was a PT and... I think it is good to, you know, highlight these things because I am not a robot. I'm not human. Social media tells you in order to get results, you need to be absolutely perfect or marketing tells you that, maybe not on social media. Um, And I wanted to show you that you cannot be perfect and still get results depending on what your results are, what you want. Um, And a lot of the times the things we're aiming for are either not attainable or really not that worth it but what I was going to say while I was off doing my shy talking (laughs) um yeah so basically I don't know I do have a lot of PT friends that I follow and they are very open about like living that balanced lifestyle in a sense of you know enjoying their life as well as enjoying training and you know meeting somewhere in the middle So, um, I think that's great. I still think there's a lot of people who don't portray that and like make it look like that's all they do. And maybe some people do do that and they just don't, maybe they don't enjoy living a bit. Um, not saying like, no, plenty of people don't drink. That's not necessarily because they have to for fitness or anything. So people just don't like the effect of alcohol or Some people don't like certain foods or they have, you know, digestive issues and that's why they avoid certain foods. And some people do it because they think it's bad for them. And some people do it, but they're just not showing that they're doing it. And um, yeah, that's just kind of something I want to talk about. And I kind of actually on that uh note I wanted to kind of start with this is one thing I did when I was first a PT or trying to be like you know healthy was like only showing like what I was eating or stuff like that if I if it was healthy basically I used to take pictures of my omelets or my salad I was having in the summer uh but not the chips I was having or the takeaways I was having at the weekend or, you know, if I was out for pints, like, you know, it's almost like, oh, you can't say you drink or anything like that because that's not seen as healthy and no one will want to work with you if they think you are, quote unquote, unhealthy. Whereas, like, that's such a really bad mindset to have because it's actually, you now obviously drinking to excess or anything like that isn't a good idea. Or eating excessive fast food is also not a good idea. But pretending you don't well one you're lying to the clients that you're trying to attract um so that's actually in a sense false advertising um two I think it's it's unhealthy to not have any of that in your life you know you need to have some you know unless you don't like it or again there's reaction and stuff but like uh you know it's it's not very healthy to be extremely on that one um and I suppose that's the kind of thing with social media you know you can show what you want to show and that's you make yourself look all great 
but you're secretly like scoffing crisps and chocolate in the background you're just not showing people and I think that is also dangerous if you are the person who's doing that because it can kind of lead to you maybe feeling guilty or maybe like you know you end up in binge restrict cycle saying you have to stay on this one because you're on it and then you have to end up like you know absolutely you end up absolutely sculling it when you're allowed to have or when you're hiding away from it um I just think you know it's better to show the wider view of everything because you are normal you are a human as I said we're not robots um I have no reason not to enjoy all types of food like I'm not training for anything I'm not on an insane quote I don't have any particular dietary requirements so there's no reason that I can't add garlic bread to a meal or have a burger and chips or you know people I think are often very surprised about how much I do eat but I also do train a lot and I have quite a bit of muscle so that gets used and coupling that that is why I eat so much so I think obviously taking into context that I eat a lot because I train a lot and I'm very active whereas other people might eat less because they are less active and that's okay too but I I just like to be open and say yeah I do have a drink I do eat takeaways I you know people I the amount of times I've had people say to me oh you probably never do that and I'm like yeah I do like you know I'm, I'm human <laughs> uh, fitness is not my life fitness is a part of my life but it's not my life and I'd rather it wasn't my life because I just don't think it would be healthy for it to be my whole life um but as I said it's a big part of my life but it's not my whole life um and I don't know, I like I said, most of the trainers I follow are kind of subscribed to mine, but I think especially, um, maybe it's different now, I don't know, but I found when I first qualified, I felt the need to portray this, like, I am healthy, the holy art and thou kind of attitude, and I wouldn't be surprised if younger coaches are thinking the same, or trainers, um, and then obviously that creates a lot of guilt around if you've got clients, they'd be afraid maybe to tell you stuff because they think they're going to get in trouble. You know, we have the whole good food, bad food. It's it's not great. Um, But yeah, I just think be open about what you're eating, try different foods and let others be open with you as well. And I always try if someone tries to say that they've had a bad day or they're eating badly, I always kind of go, well, look, this one of those days, some things happen. And if you can kind of make peace with that and draw a line under the sand and come back, it won't, like, you're less likely to go off the rails next time, you know? Um, so I never say to someone, yeah, bad day, get back on it tomorrow. Just be like, okay, so that's happened. We have days like that. Did you have fun? That's the main thing. Um, I don't judge to what people eat. Obviously, if they are looking for a certain goal and they're not eating towards a goal, I might suggest do you think you would have something more um, beneficial towards your goal? But other than that, I'd, I'm not going to be like, no, 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 you can't eat that. That's bad. And that was like something that I like fell into for years as well. Like I, even after I was a PT, because I suppose you kind of hear these things, these buzzwords, and you don't really, I suppose you don't really research into it. You just hear becoming a fad almost. And you see the de the basic details behind it that sell it and you're like, yeah, so like, you know, I used to try low carbs all the time. I um got low fat. I badly calorie counted many times. Um, I would, you know, be like, yeah, well, you're like, you know, same before when my mom couldn't lose weight. I was like, well, you're not eating enough. So that's why. That's why you can't lose weight because you've gone into starvation mode. I'm like, starvation mode is a load of bollocks. Um, there have been plenty of tro uh, things to be shown that that's doesn't, doesn't, um, it doesn't really exist and then obviously on the flip side I said low carb yeah fine I've done intermittent fasting I did that for a while um and to be honest I'm glad I don't do it anymore I there was times before when I thought yeah no it's grand you know you convince yourself you're not hungry you're fine and here's one that I've, I've realized over the last years when I'm like really hungry um obviously we've heard of hunger I get cranky but what would happen is I'd work in the morning and then I'd go up to Sam and I'd be either, especially when I was intermittent fast, and um, I'd either feel really weak and unable to do things. And I'd be like, why am I so tired? Because you've nothing in your system. Um, And then the other thing would be that I would get really snappy with him. And if he wasn't listening to me, I'd get really thick with him. And you're like, why Why is your temper so short? You're hungry. You may not, like, you may have ignored the hunger cues, but your body is telling you that you're hungry. So... I think that's one thing 
it's very important if you do find yourself getting snappy with people or feeling like you're so low energy that could be a sign that you need to eat more or you need to eat more frequently and it's really really important that we try and keep on top of that and a lot of the time ignoring those hunger cues won't actually help you lose weight it'll just lead to you maybe over meeting later in the day or just having a miserable time altogether so trying to keep those you know even if you want to try and keep low calories in them you just you know bulk out your veg have a big massive salad just to feel yourself a bit more full these are things that we can do as opposed to just cutting out carbs and that's something i'm never doing again because like you're hungry and cranky and miserable uh when carbs are class obviously we have to be careful with our carbs but <laughs> not be careful but you know um just not eat constant carbs <laughs> that makes sense up your protein keep you fuller for longer carbs you'll be hunger quicker nothing wrong with carbs they're wonderful they taste great cake is made from carbs how can that be bad for you cake is great for your soul um <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of like, I've definitely fell into the diet culture stuff before I was qualified and even after I was qualified and kind of understanding everything, but never applying it properly. And there was one time that I applied it properly and there is a big difference. And now for me, I don't read, I don't, I don't count calories. I don't monitor. I could probably do it more protein in my diet, but I kind of just eat how I feel. I try to keep myself that I'm not like ending up grabbing quick stuff because I am very lazy for that so if I can bring like a protein shake with me to keep me going till I get home to have lunch or throw a bar or something like that anything in my bag these are all kind of quick go-to's that I keep with me as opposed to like I live by them um I try to do that keep myself from going and stuffing my face <laughs> when I get home with anything I can get my hands on but I found that has worked more for me than when I used to do all the diets that I never did properly <laughs> and never stuck to properly. So I uh, I think it's better now. I'm more more balanced in my approach and I enjoy my life and I'm still reasonably fit. And uh, yeah, I just, I think for me anyway, and if this is something you've been struggling with, maybe it's something you could look into as well as like, maybe trying these diets and bouncing in and out of them and just not finding them easy to stick to maybe we just try and focus on having three meals a day or working on adding a few more vegetables in your diet or adding more protein to your diet and just leave it at that for the moment and when you get the hang of that then you can go into something different as opposed to like completely changing and overhauling your life I talk about this loads but I still feel like people are doing this every January it's not going to work don't overhaul gradually do it um and another thing going on that was uh I used to do excessive amounts of cardio and I still I still did that like right up until even after I was a PT I think but well I suppose when I did it originally I used to like spend hours not hours but like far too long on the cardio machine on an incline just walking and you know sweating loads because you know it just sweats your fat crying and stuff like that I used to do that so much um not so much anymore but that was something I did and Another thing, I was a time where I, when I, one of the gyms I worked in, I used to teach spin like five, six times a week. So I suppose in that sense, like I was doing effect on the cardio, but like my leg training was crap because I never had any power in my legs because I was always knackered or my legs were always knackered. Um, so that was more of a job related thing because I used to like to stay on the bike for spin. But back before I was qualified, I would have done excessive amounts of cardio times because again, that was how you lose weight and now I do other than my horse riding I might run the odd time I do a bit of extra cardio on the side but nowhere near as much as I would have before Um, sometimes I just go walking and I actually feel like I'm in better shape now because I focus more on lifting and trying to get more powerful and you know that to me it's been more enjoyable and I don't spend hours walking up a hill if I go for a walk I go for walks I want to I potter along I don't really rush unless I have to be home somewhere and other things you know that kind of thing with you know a horse ride because that's enjoyable and that's quite physical and then I run because sometimes I like to make myself suffer but you know that's the thing like I don't feel like every session has to be ended with like an hour of cardio like I used to spend like two hours on in the gym um kind of being like okay so I've done my weights and I've never really pushed weights the way I needed to so 
that's always obviously you need to challenge yourself a bit more uh, but then I'd spend so long on the cardio just to be like yes I've done my cardio you know it's 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 weird um and you'd almost get mad like because there's an incline trainer in the gym and you always get mad if someone was on it you'd be like right or let's be over the treadmill now for a minute grand incline trainer <laughs> it's uh yeah that I've seen a lot of people go through this as well and they're going through so much cardio and they're wondering why it's not changing because their body's adapted to the amount they do and they never try to go a little bit harder or anything like that and it's totally fine for people who are just trying to keep fit but if you have a goal in mind you should probably get a bit more structure maybe try and step away from the cardio there is no problem with doing cardio but like it's not going to be your be all and end all so that was one other thing that I found that I I suppose I made that mistake when I was younger but I think it's always been sold to us you know you see fat a sweat is fat crying but it's it's not it's just your body's response to uh being hot the hotter you are your body sweats the sweat cools you down it stops you from overheating that is all that does you sweating more doesn't mean your workout has been more efficient um i know we think that but it's actually not sweating is just as i said body's response to heat um uh, oftentimes as well resistance training will promote more calorie burning over the course of the next day or two than cardio because more muscle fibers are teared and your body has to use the energy to repair them and that's why you need to get your protein in as well, because protein is the only thing that can help you repair those muscle fibers. And by the way, muscle fibers tearing is not an issue. It's it's um it's how we build more muscle. They grow back stronger. They grow back denser. Um, it's it's obviously I'm not talking about a pulled hamstring. I'm talking about the soreness we get from training. So just in case everyone was like, what muscles tearing? That is uh the answer to that one. Um, I used to always well as I used to always put pictures of me like, um showing like my progress or whatever and uh showing my training and stuff like that and assuming that like that would just bring me clients and I'm like hmm but I'm showing people I can train so why aren't they coming to me and that's like one of the marketing mistakes I think a lot of PTs make it's uh like people don't come <laughs> well some people do come to people because they see the size of them but I think oftentimes it's more um how like how you make them feel or if you feel like they're speaking to you they'll actually come to you not uh, that that's a small mistake that I think I think most PTs do like we post look at us training I still post pictures of me training um just to like show what I'm at and what I do but what I do can be vastly different to what I get you guys to do um which is always worth noting like I'm not expecting people I train to do what I do because I've been doing it for years and I wouldn't expect anyone to be at that level um Though a lot of us do seem to expect we should be at a level really quickly and we're surprised that something we haven't done in ages is really hard or have never done is really hard. Um, But that's a talk for another day. I think I've covered that before as well. But uh, do remind yourself that, like, be be happy to be the beginner. Like, the beginner is great because you can learn so much Um, and don't focus on other people around you because they're not paying attention to you. So you're better off not paying attention to them. That's just um, a little side note there. Um, but yeah, I used to follow this profile, like, you know, um, my, what you call them, progress pictures and kind of be mad if they didn't look like amazingly different. I don't really do that anymore. The odd time I might have a photo, but that's just more my own um, records, I suppose. And again, it was always looking at like, how flat could I get my stomach? Did I look right? Getting the right angle. And it's just like, it's kind of silly in a sense, because it's all well and good me having the shape but like nobody's looking at me like that a lot of the time um so it's literally you're just posting out for validation which is fine some of us want that validation you know um I did but I think you know looking at how like you know people are going to see you mostly in normal clothes so they're not like looking for your abs or looking for your muscles so it's just kind of a weird thing not weird thing to do but a kind of pointless in a sense I suppose um is the best way of doing it um another issue that I did and I think a lot of PTs have this as well especially those who maybe have done some form of big transformation and they become a PT off the back of that is um basically uh, I think there's one way to do things so I know this is a bad saying but you know there's a thousand ways to skin a cat or something like that is the saying but basically it's the same when it comes to training there are so many different types of training you can do, so many different ways you can do it, so many ways you can eat, so many ways you can 
chain and that like what suits people differs from person to person so because me lifting heavy and doing a bit of running has worked for me not worked in a sense but it's what I do and eating the way I eat like works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody so I think these blanket prescriptions and even how you do an exercise as well I want to put that one in there as well like there is no like a blanket that is absolutely across the board 100% right uh something could be right for me could be right for, not right for different like we forget as well not only are we different you know gender age size shape but like our actual anatomy is different so my hips could move different to your hips my um like shoulders mobility all these different things are different from person to person so you can't say without a doubt that this is the exact way that everyone should do it um, and that never changes and people are very quick to correct you on social media which is quite interesting when you have people telling you you're doing something wrong like say I've had people tell me I put, I put up a deadlift video that like you know I was doing wrong ego lifting but once you're in control a lot of the time it's totally grand now obviously when you are PT and people you have to be careful and we don't want them to injure themselves it's fine if I put my back out but not if I did it with a client but again doing all these saying you have to do it this way you have to do this makes no sense because no two people are the same so why should everybody who is everybody's training is the same everybody's diet be the same if that was the case everything would be sorted by now we wouldn't have people with issues with um you know obesity or people who are getting multiple injuries doing something or people who you know bouncing out of the gym if there was one way of doing everything it'd be cracked by now and everyone would know how to do it and they'd just get it done I think hopefully people are still lazy so maybe not not always lazy sometimes busy sometimes other things get in the way I'm not saying um just because you don't train doesn't mean you're lazy it's just I think we have to be mindful of that and that can be very dangerous to think this is just a one way because you shut out other ways and potentially one way is going to work better for you than the way that you're doing it but you won't do that because it's the only way of doing it and then as I said with like coaches and stuff like that who come out into the industry saying like they maybe did mad transformation this how they did it or they did this that and the other and they are selling that like cookie cutter plan that works for them to their clients and clients mightn't be getting the same results and they don't know why and the coach is blaming it back on them because it worked for them I'm not saying many coaches do it but some probably do there is like I do know out there there are people who maybe aren't even qualified I haven't really worked with general population but this works for them so that's what we do and it can as I said it cannot always it doesn't always work for people um as I said that goes with exercise it goes with diets as well you know some diets work for people some people don't some people swear by them uh others people hate them you know you often see people who go on certain diets suddenly think it's the best thing ever because I feel so great I feel so energized and all this when oftentimes say for instance if it was a keto or like a, a vegan diet or whatever they've cut out a lot of the processed food or a lot of the f like heavy stuff that I've been eating so much and now they're replacing it with more vegetables or like more rounded diet and that's why they feel so good because they're like oh my digestive system is eating is uh, running properly and you could do that without cutting out all food groups and still being able to enjoy stuff you normally do so you have to remember that as well like it's not necessarily oh this is the diet this fixes everything it is how was I eating before that and how was I eating now is there more vegetables in my diet? Is there more like protein in my diet? Is there more fiber in my diet? That's probably the answer as to why you feel so good as opposed to this diet fixes everything. And, um, you know, people are very quick to label that as the, the be all and end all when actually it's not. Um, and I did mention about, um, you know, commenting on other people. Now, I never would say to someone or go on someone's page and make a comment because you're kind of looking at one thing at a 
in context like you don't really get context you might see something and you might see someone be like oh well their squat could be deeper that could work better blah 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 but like maybe the person that they're training can't, don't have the mobility and they're working on building to that so coming out and like doing these kind of comments uh don't really work because you are as I said taking one script snapshot you've no context you don't know the client you don't know the trainer you don't know what's going on so it's very easy to judge what they say or what they're posting and I would have been bad for this but I've never commented on them but I would have said it in my head so now anytime I see something you know often as well you know it's just because you're jealous you end up saying it or thinking it in your head so now when I catch myself doing that I kind of try to look at like well what is the context here am I just deciding that do I know the history like as I said you don't know the client you don't know what's going on you don't know their injury history you don't know anything like that so just because it doesn't look perfect doesn't mean it's wrong so with these people you're trying to work on bettering them and you can't really do that without these back like you can't do that without starting somewhere or again working with how they work like how their body works is really important as well because of that we shouldn't be judging what we see on um the internet so if you see someone doing something you think that's wrong you should probably as i said look for the context you can't uh, like you you know go go ask their pg ask their med- medical history ask them why they're doing it don't do that that's uh, gdpr issues but you know before you make those decisions snap decisions and trying to decide on that which is something i did before remember that you don't have the full story and you it's you can't comment on it to be honest <laughs> so that was uh something that i thought was really important to say and something that i have been bad for and i do try to catch myself and again a lot of the time this comes from jealousy uh not actually anything constructive you are just jealous that they are putting up stuff there they're showing their clients and you're mad that you're not doing that and you just want to be like, oh yeah, well, they're not doing it right because then it makes you feel better. And that's literally as far as it goes, I think, when it comes to these things. Because often people try and put people down when they are jealous. It's not a, you never see someone who's doing well dragging others down. So I think it's really important to remember that and just, you know, support everyone. Um, realize that there's probably a reason that they're doing that. And... If there isn't a reason, well, just thank God they're not your trainer. <laughs> and uh, I think with that as well, there's a, I think a problem that a lot of people, and I think myself was part of the reason I came into this game as well, is that like, just because you like training doesn't mean you're going to be a good coach because there's a lot more to coaching and training and working with people than just giving them exercise and telling them not to eat a cake every day or something like that or burgers every day I don't know who knows uh there's more like you know people are going through stuff it's why they go training people talk to you you know you you find you're hearing a lot of underlying issues that people might even realize that they're underlying and you have to learn how to talk to them um part of the reason I went into training is because I also like teaching but I don't like children so that kind of helped um but again you know you're here to support your clients you're not here to judge them and give out to them and that's the issue with some people I think people are coming in going I'm going to train as well become a coach we forget how difficult this this um job can be because it's very like hands-on you are with people you're constantly kind of switched on and that can be draining and tiring so you have to have the right mentality for that like you know you don't want to get snappy with people you don't want to be getting thick with people you know you need to be able to understand that like people are expecting you or looking to you for help and best you can do is help them and try to think about how you're talking to people and try and educate them in the best ways as opposed to giving out to them telling them they're wrong and you know it's just all about supporting people and that is a big part of our job so you have to have that empathy element as well um and again I said part of the reason I originally came into this was that I just was going to teach coaching and I thought yeah or sorry I was going to training I thought yeah this is the next logical step but you know it's a vastly different than what I expected and I don't regret it by the way I I really do enjoy what I do and um, it's a hard job but it's it's definitely very rewarding seeing seeing people do things they didn't think they'd, do, they'd ever do being really happy with their progress and just 
feeling more confident about themselves and everything like I that's they're the kind of things that like light me up and they're the reasons I keep doing this I just love seeing people happy and enjoying their job and their job or what they're doing and the training and people especially people who don't like the gym coming in and eventually like becoming like really really like part of the community and really enjoying it and that's why I love about small gyms as well we have we have that real community element um I've worked in mostly small gyms uh since I started I went from one extreme to the other uh and I where I am now is probably my favorite way to be so I think that is it there's a few admissions of mistakes or things I got wrong over the years I'm pretty sure I'm going to get plenty more wrong over the next couple of years because the thing about this uh job is you're always learning it's great that you have the opportunity constantly be learning and things are constantly developing in the science world that help us learn more and that's another thing like if you think you're ever done learning you're probably not in the right job because you'll never stop learning and finding like and that's one of the fun things about this like you have to keep learning and growing and keeping up with what's going on um so yeah I think you know as I said if you're ever think you're you've learned everything you probably need to change or move on because you should you shouldn't think you know everything basically because you don't know everything and you never can know everything but with that, I am going to leave you all. Um, thank you for listening. As ever, you can find me on Instagram. It's Chrissy H Fitness. Or my other Instagram is Strong in the Saddle. So that's my equestrian fitness page. Uh, so it's Strong in the Saddle underscore. I'm also on TikTok with that one. It's Strong in the Saddle without the underscore. And then my website is www.chrissyhawkins.com if you want to find out anything about working with me or anything like that even drop me a question or drop me a dm if any of these resonated with you or you are interested in asking more about them i'd love to chat but thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed i really do appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast so if you please could help me with the algorithm and leave a review on apple Podcasts or spotify and even you know if you want to reach out and suggest topics for me i'd be delighted to hear from you drop me a dm on instagram or tiktok and thanks again for listening Mm -hmm.